Ernest Hemingway's short story, Hills Like White Elephants, takes place in the mid-1920s at a train station in northern Spain, along the Ebro River between Barcelona and Madrid. In the introduction, an American man and his girlfriend wait to board an express train to Madrid that's due in 40 minutes. In the rising action, ordering drinks while they're waiting, the couple starts to talk. The girl looks at the countryside and says the nearby hills look like white elephants. When the man says he's never seen one, she agrees he wouldn't have. She plays with a curtain made of bamboo beads and notices something is painted on it. The man tells her it's an ad for Anis del Toro, an alcoholic beverage. She suggests they try it, and the man orders some for both of them. They sip the anise and discuss how it tastes, which leads to a brief squabble. The man asks the girl to stop acting the way she is. The girl claims she's trying to be amusing and have a good time. She characterizes their relationship as drinking and looking at new things. After the wind blows the curtain, causing it to brush against the table, the man begins to talk about an operation he wants her to consider. He talks around the topic, saying it's not really an operation at all. He suggests it's so minor that she won't mind it, and that afterward they'll go back to being the same as they were before. She asks for reassurance. He promises lots of people have had the operation and been happy afterward. She says she'll do as he asks because she doesn't care about herself. But he says he doesn't want her to have the operation if that's how she's thinking about it. It's strongly implied this operation is an abortion. The girl stands up and walks away, looking out at the landscape. Seeing the shadow of a cloud moving through, she says they can have everything, but they are making it impossible. This leads to a back and forth argument over whether the couple can have everything. He argues they can have everything while she argues they can't, especially once they've taken it away. The argument ends with his saying she shouldn't feel that way and her asking if they can stop talking. After a pause, he says she shouldn't go through with it if she doesn't want to and that he'd go through it with her. She asks if it means anything to him, would he do something for her? The man says he'll do anything for her. And in the dramatic climax of their conversation, she begs him to stop talking. This produces another break in the conversation. The man looks away, turning his gaze to their suitcases. Their bags have stickers on them from all the places they've spent the night. The waitress brings them two beers and tells them the train will arrive in five minutes. In the falling action, the man moves the bags to the other side of the station. And in the resolution, the American returns to their table. The girl smiles at him. When he asks if she feels better, she tells him she feels fine. Ernest Hemingway very carefully never uses the term abortion in the narrative. Readers have to deduce what the couple is talking about, why it seems to matter so much, and why they're fighting. But the story's title and central image, the symbol of the hills being like white elephants, points to the emotional gravity of their argument, something still controversial to this day. Consider how hills are rounded like the belly of a pregnant woman. Elephants have rounded bodies. More importantly, the girl does not see the hills as being like elephants, but as being white elephants, which are very rare and considered special, even sacred in Indian culture. In fact, one night after 20 years of childless marriage, Buddha's mother dreamed of a white elephant, symbolizing she was going to have a son of great importance. It's the American who introduces the topic of the operation, and he does so seemingly out of the blue. They'd been talking about how good the beer is. Since he tries to persuade the girl to get the operation, arguing it's awfully simple, this tells the reader several things. The American and the girl both know what medical procedure he's talking about. She looks away as soon as he mentions it, telling the readers the topic makes her uncomfortable. Is the American manipulating her for selfish reasons? Is her smile at the end of the story a satisfied realization that she can and will go her own way without the American? Hemingway leaves readers to decide for themselves based on the evidence he provides in the narrative. Labels and names also play key roles in the famous short story. The man calls the girl Jig, likely a nickname, but at no point does either character call one another by their full names. On one hand, this is simple realism. When people know each other really well, as lovers ideally do, they rarely use one another's full names and frequently use nicknames. On the other hand, this leaves readers without easy access to the characters, and withholding names also universalizes the story. These people could be any man and woman. Now, beyond the story itself, Hemingway had complicated attitudes about parenthood, pregnancy, and abortion. He felt that Hadley, his first wife, had gotten pregnant too soon, and he felt trapped as a result. 
Some critics even believe that Hemingway cast himself in the role of the American. When Hemingway learned his first wife was pregnant, he apparently decided she'd gotten pregnant intentionally, and he started keeping track of her menstrual cycles to prevent a second pregnancy. When he thought she was pregnant a second time, which turned out to be a false alarm, he started complaining to friends, who suggested he have Hadley get an abortion. There are three central characters in Ernest Hemingway's short story, Hills Like White Elephants. The American, the girl, or Jig, and the waitress. The American, or the man, as Hemingway sometimes calls him, seems young and confident. He speaks Spanish and knows something about Spanish beer and drinks like anise and absinthe. He thinks of himself as rational. His primary goal is to persuade the girl to abort her pregnancy, with the secondary goal of getting their relationship to return to normal. He tries to convince the girl by talking around the issue, minimizing it, and explains things in the way he thinks makes them seem logical. He does tell the girl he loves her, but only after she asks if he'll love her once she has the abortion. Similarly, after she agrees to have the abortion, he tells her he doesn't want her to have it if she doesn't want to, that they could go through with it if she wants to. Readers don't know much more about the girl than they do the American. The girl, or Jig as the man calls her, is pregnant, and she's trying to decide what to do about the situation. She's upset and finds reasons to fight with the American in small ways. She is the more emotional of the two, at least in these brief moments that comprise the famous story. Throughout the story, and especially at the start, she seems willing to let the man take the lead and care for her. She asks him what they should drink, what the ad painted on the bamboo <laughs> curtain says, and so on. Despite being upset, she clearly understands her lover very well. She can follow his oblique references and shifting topics without difficulty. But through the nuances of their conversation, readers can tell she's deeply conflicted. The waitress has a minimal role in the story, but provides some impetus for action. She brings the characters drinks and answers basic questions, like the train's expected arrival time. Her main dramatic function is to force pauses or minor redirections in the conversation between the man and the girl. White elephants, light and darkness, railroad tracks, and the beaded curtain are the key symbols packed into Ernest Hemingway's legendary short story, Hills Like White Elephants. The girl introduces the image of white elephants when she says the hills beyond the station look like them. And the American and the girl admit they've never seen one. Clearly, they're talking about something else. Yes, these hills are rounded like elephants, but also like the bellies of pregnant women. White elephants are very rare in nature and are considered a portent that something important is about to happen. The phrase white elephant is an idiom for an unwanted, impractical gift, something the recipient does not want to keep because the gift lacks some kind of value. People therefore try to get rid of a white elephant. This definitely applies to the girl's pregnancy in the story. It's an unwanted gift, and one that the American sees as the ruin of his relationship with the girl. Hemingway emphasizes the relationship between light and darkness all throughout the story. Where the train station is located, there are no nearby trees to provide shade. The station sits in the full glare of the sun, and the only shade available is the shadow cast by the building itself. This stark division between light and dark parallels the division between the two characters' sides of the discussion and the harsh choice the American is pressuring the girl to make. The entire story takes place at a train station, a physical and metaphorical crossroads of railroad tracks in the couple's journey. Each track symbolizes a possible life path. They're waiting for a train that would take them to Madrid, in Spanish, the word for mother is madre, so maybe they're literally sitting on the track to motherhood. Finally, the beaded curtain made of strings of bamboo beads symbolizes several different things. Some critics read the beads as being like a rosary, a string of beads used during prayers in some religions, which the girl fingers for emotional support or comfort, or even a plea for religious forgiveness. Others read the curtain as a barrier between the American and the girl, one neither of them ever passes through. Gender, communication, and love. 
These are the big themes in the short story, Hills Like White Elephants. Many elements of the story are influenced by gender. The American man and Jig, the girl, experience their relationship and communicate very differently, predominantly due to gender. The couple is tense with one another, and the girl has much more reason to be tense. At the time, beyond the ethical arguments prevalent to this day, there were also some physical risks to the girl. The abortion would not be done in a hospital, and the person doing it might not even be a doctor. The possibility of infection was great, which could lead to difficulties with pregnancy in the future, or even death. But for the man, it seems to be more about just not having a baby so he can keep having fun. Their respective responses to the proposed abortion highlight just how different their realities are, all due to gender. Communication is a complex theme throughout the story. At times, the couple seems to communicate with exceptional skill, understanding what they're talking about with just a few words, without directly naming the topic. This can be seen most clearly in how they discuss the abortion. For every word said, a great deal more goes unsaid or implied, and what's left out is as important as what the characters actually say to each other. Even slight pronoun shifts matter, such as the way the American says it rather than the operation, and then uses it to refer to having the baby. Finally, concerns about love can be seen everywhere in the verbal shadows and backstory. The American and the girl are a couple, and the girl's pregnancy now requires that they consider the true nature of their relationship. One the girl realizes might be of less importance to her partner than she thought. The American does tell her he loves her. However, he does so only when the girl asks if he'll love her after she has the abortion. 